last time I was in this room was when I had the benefit for Dick Hughes. And I went directly from here up to see him. And he said, Paul, I didn't know I had so many friends. That's the way I feel tonight. I didn't know so many people would be interested in what I had to say. Um, I had it all organized here, and I didn't. Uh, <laughs> it's going to come out all together. <laughs> These two people here in the front row told me that 40 years ago I took their wedding pictures. It tells you something. <laughs> that they're both older than we used to be. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're here. Uh, <laughs> if you could tell me the story of your life, everybody else could tell me the story of your life, it would be very interesting. Why you left where you were and all the things that brought you into this room tonight. I'll have to tell you a little bit about how I got to this room tonight. I was born in Ohio, my dad was a Methodist preacher, moved around to a lot of little towns, graduated from a little town, had 19 kids in a senior class, and I went to Ohio State, got a master's degree in botany, and taught botany as well as for a few years, and then I went to work with Boy Scouts for a little while, and then one day, I got a letter. And it was a nice letter. It said, Dear Sir, your name has been recommended to us by the Bureau of Naval Personnel as a possible candidate for a commission in Class D, V, S, A, V. And I still don't know. <laughs> we are enclosing a complete set of application papers and so forth. And they did. And I filled them out. And there was my picture. And pretty soon I got that pretty paper. And and I got orders to go to the Naval School of Photography in Pensacola, Florida. That's pretty quick, but that's the way I happened to be in this business. Well, I like photography so well that I never got out of it. I don't know a Daniel Lyons from an oak tree anymore, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, went to the Naval School of Photography. You came up here and you saw these, this picture of me under the sign to prove it, and here's some other pictures that I took. Now, at that school, they gave us a whole course in photography. It was really thorough. And the cameras we had to work with then were pretty rudimentary. I remember I played in the football band when I was in college, and I remember seeing the Columbus Dispatch photographers run up and down the sidelines of the football field with a camera just like this. This is called a graph race. And he'd get his nose down here in the hole, and focus it and take pictures. Now why would he use a monstrosity like this? Because it has what's called a focal plane shutter. I'm going to give you a little lesson in photography here. A focal plane shutter. And see that curtain? When they push the button, that curtain, did you see a little thing go popping down there? A little hole? Well, let's see if we can make it come back. That fast. She couldn't even see it. And <clears throat> these were the only cameras that would shoot at a thousandth of a second so they could stop action. That's why they used these cameras. But better than that, this is the only camera that I can still take it out, shoot 12 shots, all different, come back and I have 12 pictures that are good enough to hang on the can't do it with any other camera. The first two pictures, true, the first two pictures that I took with that camera, the Naval School of Guitar, it just shows you what you can do with it. Because you see a big four by five inch viewfinder. You see just what you're doing. Then the next camera they made us use was this <coughs> speed ramp. Looks old fashioned now, but it hasn't been old fashioned for many years. And it kind of folds up and put it away and doesn't take up a lot of room like that. They taught us that if we had to get in a fight with it, with it 
chap, and I'm going to call them Japs all night long because that's what I think I always call them. We got in a fight with a Jap that could jam that thing into him and it would hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you fight the Japs with a speed grab. <laughs> okay. Then, those were the two cameras we used for a long, long time. In fact, we used them all the way through the Navy and many years afterwards. That's what I took care of many pictures of it. This little camera, <coughs> I'll show it to you now, although it shouldn't be talked about until I get a little farther into the top. This is called the Yashika D, but they made them first, they were called roller boxes, and they used 120 film. And these are the cameras that all Life magazine boys use. Why would they use these instead of these cameras? Well, can you imagine that you'd have to use these old-fashioned film holders to put into this camera, put it in here, roll the dark slide, then you take the picture, then you put the dark slide back in, take it out, turn it over, Take another picture. Okay, how many of these film holders can a fellow carry around with him? And yet that was <coughs> the way all the combat pictures were taken. <coughs> all the Army, all the Navy, all the Coast Guard had to do it just like that. But think how much easier that was than when Brady had to take pictures during the Civil War. He had to take a glass plate coated with wet jello in a dark tent in a wagon, put it in the camera, take it out, take his exposure for several minutes, take it back in, and develop it properly. <coughs> That's the way he got his Civil War picture. So this is so much better than that, but it's nearly, not nearly as good as this because they used 120 film, put a roll of film in there, you can take 12 exposures before you have to change film. Now, changing film is not easy. I'm not going to take the time to do it, but it's not easy. Pull this thing over in here, and pull it out, take the film out, you put another one in, and thread it in, turn it up, and so on. I've seen life, this is the truth, I've seen life magazine, boys sit out under the shade against the mess hall and practice the film. The film didn't cost them anything. Practice loading film. How long? 12 seconds. They knew they were going to get into combat one of these days and they didn't have time to fool around with as long a time as it would take you and me to load it. And I've done it a lot of times but it still takes a minute or two to load it. But they but practice and practice and practice until it's just like playing the piano or driving a car. Twelve seconds. Okay, <coughs> so I went to Pensacola to the School of Photography and one day we graduated. And I got orders to go down to Sanford, Florida. I don't have many pictures of me at Sanford, Florida. And oh yes, I do, just one in a Jeep. I don't know why it happened, but I did. Now, I think I got sent there by mistake because uh, this, I was supposed to go down there to work with a squadron, and before I got there, the squadron had gone away. So it wasn't, I was only there a month or two. And I wouldn't have been there that long, but I had an impacted wisdom tooth, and they put me in the hospital for two weeks to take out this wisdom tooth. <laughs> Typical pity. <laughs> <laughs> and I got well playing with some of the nurses, and uh, then it was time to move on, and I moved up to Buford, South Carolina. Now there, I did have an opportunity to take some pictures. I was there about a, a year. You see that these have gotten a little disorganized, but I'm going to show you some of the some of the Buford, South Carolina pictures. All the pretty Spanish moss. This hasn't got much to do with the war, but this, it is pretty down there. And uh, we had photographers' mates. I had about five or six photographers' mates. I wasn't supposed to take any pictures. Uh, 
they're supposed to take the pictures. But whenever a crash happened, who did they call? The only guy they knew, Sudlow. Three o'clock in the morning, whatever. So then I'd have to go out and do some stuff. That's not at three o'clock in the morning, and this isn't either, but these are crashes. But this is after one of those crash on a little jet. This has a little interesting story. These boys weren't supposed to be on that flight, but they wanted to take a flight on Sunday morning when they got on the plane, and the uh, plane crashed off in the woods on takeoff. The most dangerous place you can be in a plane where it's on a crash, you don't have a picture of that kind of a plane, but if you're up here and the plane crashes, it comes along and cuts your head off. And there was a man sitting there up in this little bubble, and there's a long pole of the seat. He was on the long seat and crashed. What happened? The pole went down, stuck in the ground, and he got up and walked away. That's right. There he is. But the rest of them didn't. I had to take the pictures. And if you ever smell cooked human flesh, you don't want to do it anymore. But that was Sunday morning, early in the dark, and by noon it was time to go back and time to eat. What did they have for dinner? Roast chicken. <laughs> no way. <laughs> These are all pictures that I took. I, I did take these at uh, Buford. That's the PV squad. The PVs are patrol bombers, and they were made of magnesium. And when they crashed, they burned. And if you know anything about the number of chemistry, magnesium burns. And there's nothing left except the engine. Nothing. It's just the engine. Okay? That's a picture of the BOQ's bachelor's officer's quarters at Buford. That's shooting straight down on the town or a city of Buford. Um, don't think we'll hurry through these because we've got other things to talk about. This Butch died. Butch was the dog. <laughs> uh, this was the prettiest sunset I ever saw in my life. It really was. It was so pretty that we put on the cover of the telephone book. Uh, these are the, uh, this was the lounge of the bastards off the, what do you call it, the clubhouse. And that's the PV squadron. These fellows are all attached to this squadron of patrol bombers that I just told you about. So much for that. Then one day, I got another letter. And this one is the most unusual record. I get here. that you have been nominated for a transfer to a billet in the Pacific Theater. You will undoubtedly receive orders from the Bureau of Naval Personnel in about a week to ten days. Due to the urgency of this billet, it is regretted that it is not possible to authorize a delay in reporting to your new duty station. Well, the commanding officer of the Naval Air Station at Buford and I had become pretty good friends. And I took it over to him and I said, Captain Turner, what do you know about this? He read it. He said, Paul, I've never seen a letter like that on my Naval career. He said, they don't tell you you're going to get orders. You just get orders. <laughs> Here they told me I was going to get orders. Well, I did. And the orders didn't tell me anymore. It said, you are hereby detached from duty at the Naval Air Station in Buford, South Carolina, and can 
such other duty as may have been assigned you, and will proceed to San Francisco, California, and report to the Commandant of the 12th Naval District for first available government or commercial air transportation to Pearl Harbor, Territory of Hawaii. And upon arrival, report to the Commandant, 14th Naval District, for duty at the Intelligence Center, Pacific Ocean Area. Now, you know just as much about it as I do. <laughs> but I did what they said, and to make a long story short, that was one way of telling me where I was supposed to go without telling the world where I was supposed to go. It turned out that I was photographic off the floor, and having them a stack. And how they picked me, I will never know. I just don't know. But it was the best duty in the Navy. From then on, I didn't take many pictures. The only picture that I took of Honolulu was this one. <laughs> <laughs> one Sunday afternoon, down at the Hawaii Hawaiian Hotel, but I always had hula dances, so I couldn't miss them. Well, anyway, what my job there was, among other things, was to take the gun camera film from gun cameras that had been taken out over the Pacific when our fighters were out there to the jazz and select what could be used for a movie that was being made called The Fighting Lady. How many of you remember seeing The Fighting Lady? Anybody? Good. 